what's up you guys it's cash and today i'm bringing you a new youtube video i'm really excited to have you guys here you have been awesome in helping me grow this community the previous video that i posted has been receiving a lot of great feedback a lot of people have been sharing it and i just really appreciate all the likes and comments that's been left on that video if you're new to the channel, I would love to have you a part of this community. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel and leave a like while you're at it. Every week I have a new video coming out for you. So you want to turn on those notification bells so you don't miss out on any of the action. I'm really excited for a lot of things that's been happening this week. As you can see, we're outside filming today. That's because inside there's a remodeling process that's been happening, which has been very smooth. I know a lot of remodels don't go as smooth as this, but it's been really a good process so far and I'm really excited about that. All week long, we've been celebrating my mom's birthday. Her birthday was January 18th, so we have been celebrating all week long, just going out to different places, checking out different restaurants, and just enjoying life to its fullest. So I titled today's video, How to Eliminate Conflict with Effective Communication. So I'm sure we've all been there, where we've had moments or situations where we didn't use our words carefully and escalated a situation. Instead of taking a brief moment to think carefully about what our next where it should be and therefore that will give us more time to de-escalate the situation there's always a moment occurring that requires us to stop and think accordingly and if we fail to realize that that easily can lead to a moment of tension so today I wanted to give you some tips and advice on how to address these moments and situations more effectively to eliminate conflict in your life. Now before we continue on, we do have to accept that there's things we can control and there's things that we can't control. One area we can't control is the conflict that comes into our life. The other area that we can control is how we respond and engage with that conflict. So when we find ourselves in these moments where we're addressing our peers, family, friends, loved ones, etc., etc., we need to ask ourselves, in this moment, are we listening to defend ourselves or are we listening to understand their point of view? If you're having a hard time trying to distinguish between which of the two you fall under, you need to ask yourself, are you waiting for your moment in the conversation to object their statements or are you actively listening, trying to understand their pain points and concerns? So when you have a clear understanding between the two, you can now move forward with these tips and advice that I would like to share with you today. So let's go ahead and get into that. Tip number one, acknowledge their concerns. I've realized how important it is to make people feel like they matter and that their words have value. In the world that we live in, we do that on a daily when it comes to online influences, when it comes to celebrities, actors, etc. any public figure that we idolize in that aspect. But how often do we acknowledge those who are in our day-to-day -day lives? Do we often take them for granted as if that's what they're supposed to do? Do we take their words and their acts of kindness for granted because that's what we expect of them to do as well? And that's something that we really need to think about because those people matter just as much as those people that we tend to idolize. So when we think about eliminating conflict, acknowledging the other person is so vital. Conflict can easily occur because the other person doesn't feel value, doesn't feel seen, doesn't feel heard. And they may be suppressing these emotions that lead up to this moment of conflict, which is why we need to acknowledge them to make them feel present in the day-to-day -day matters. And something that you can easily do is to be present with them, make eye contact with them, acknowledge their statements. You can easily say, hey, I see that your needs are not being met in this regard and try to meet their expectations. Tip number two, have follow-up questions. So one of the benefits of asking a follow-up question is that it gives you additional information that the individual may have not shared with you already. And with the more information that you're able to collect, you can now provide them with the proper feedback to keep the conversation moving forward. So when you combine acknowledging statements with follow-up questions, you're really being able to connect and align with the individual in ways that you may not have been able to do so before. So here's an example of how to connect the two. Hey, I see your needs are not being met. How can I be able to assist you in making this better? Hey, I noticed there's a problem in our workflow. What solutions did you have in mind so we can fix this? These are just a few examples of how you can combine acknowledging statements with follow-up questions to move the conversation forward. Sometimes in life, we jump to conclusions thinking we have enough information to make the proper assessment in regards to the moment that we're currently in. However, I would recommend that we ask as many questions as necessary so that we are well informed with additional information to make the right statements in these conversations. No one likes to feel as if they're speaking out of context or out of term. So one way to eliminate that is just to ask additional questions, specifically follow-up questions, to give the other person, the other individual, more time to express themselves so when you do speak, they know that you have been listening and that you have thought everything out carefully. And the third tip is to 
provide assurance. When we state that we're willing to provide assurance to the individual, we're telling them that I'm trustworthy. You're telling them that we can work through this together. You're assuring them that we can eliminate this repeated pattern. Trust is such an essential aspect when you want to eliminate conflict because we're in this situation due to something being broken. And we have to assure them that they can depend on us to move through this together. So the fourth tip that I have for you today is this question here. Have I clearly communicated my perspective? It's so easy for us to get in situations where we think we've discussed everything that we needed to say that the receiver should have interpreted very clearly and be on the same page with us. But we need to ask them, do they understand? Is there anything that they're missing? Do I need to clarify anything? And we can't just put all the responsibility on the other person. We have to ask ourselves, was there anything that I left out of this conversation that may have made it confusing? These are conversations we need to ask ourselves so as we move through other dialogues, we don't repeat some of the same patterns or mistakes that we've done previously. It's easy to forget this and it's something you already know. People are not mind readers, so it's our job to try to communicate everything that we need to say out loud vocally, not telepathically, but out loud vocally so that we know we are being heard, we're being seen, and that our words are actually being valued by the other person that's listening to our statements. So I wanna thank everybody for watching today's video. I hope that you found value in it and how to eliminate conflict with proper communication. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you're new here to the channel, go ahead and subscribe while you're at it. And I can't wait to see you in the next video. All right, peace out.